Well, welcome back to session number four, how we get motion graphics integrated. We'll show you how you set those up inside your software to get them ready to go. So let me cut to this screen here. And now you can see the software. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our HyperDeck, right? And we are gonna integrate it with our keys. And we have our upstream keys right here. I have one key on right now, which is this graphic. And I also have three more keys. So I'll probably use key number three for this demo because that's something I normally do not have assigned all the time. I like to have it assigned to my HyperDeck because I have key number one assigned to Media Pool 1, Media Player 1, and Media Player 2. And if I want to show a video, um, I can play that by cutting to channel 7 in my software. But if I want a motion graphic, that's going to be playing usually through my keys. I can also assign that to a DVE, which is also in the upstream keys. But we're going to talk right now about how to assign a motion graphic to a key so you could use a motion lower thirds to pop up on the screen. So let me cut to this other view here so you can see this screen. So here's the front of the HyperDeck. So let me hit play here. And there is a graphic plane. This is my animated lower thirds we're going to use for this video. Um, but I don't want it just to play once. I want to loop it. So I'm going to hit this again. I have it set to loop. I could also go back to the software and I could go up here to my media player and I could turn loop on here as well. And you can see on this disc, I only have one motion graphic. That's all that's on that SD card. And if we cut back to um, this view, that SD card is right here. I can unplug it. You see the graphic went away. I have that loaded on this SD card. Again, these SD cards need to go at at least 120 megabytes a second. This is 170 megabytes a second. We will pop that back in. It reads it green for just a second and then it goes live. And then that video is there. It doesn't have a clip, but if I hit play and hit it again, it's now looping. So we have that set up. So let's cut back to this view. So in this view, you're going to be able to watch the HyperDeck and you're going to be able to watch the program, which I'm in. And you're also going to be able to watch the control software. And we're going to walk you through how you set these up. So we know that we're going to get rid of the graphic I have right now. So just so you kind of know the sequence, here's my media player. I have this lower thirds that's below me right now, right here in media player one. I have this logo in media player two which is for a different animation. So if I go back to my switcher, I have this in Media Player 1, and I have Key 1 assigned to Media Player 1. And how do I know that? Well, close my HyperDeck, go into Palettes up here in this screen, go down to Key 1, and you can see it's assigned to Media Player 1. And if it has an alpha channel, I need to have that set up as, as fill, and then I need to have the key, which is the alpha channel, set up to um, media player key, and that's right here. So you have fill and key, and those are set up. And when I turn this on and off, you can see that that graphic goes on and off the screen. So I can turn them on or I can have them set to follow. So whatever camera I cut to next, that would be on, which would be super source because I have super source ready down here. I'm on super source now, but if I did a cut, I would be just cutting to super source. And so that graphic is not going to go away. And you can see it pop right back up because I had turned it off. So let me cut back. And now the graphic goes away again because I have it set to follow whatever I cut to. If I want to have it on all the time, I turn this off and that on. So that's how you make sure I cut now. And that graphic is just staying, right? It's not going away, but you can still see in that lower screen right over there that my graphic is still there in the HyperDeck. It's waiting, it's ready, it's patient. It wants to come on the show. So let me turn this graphic off. Now let's go over to key number three and set up the HyperDeck. So key number three is right here and it's set to HyperDeck. Um, we're gonna check to see if it is a pre-multiplied key. So we want to turn DVD off and make sure we have mix on. And then I want to click right here on that key. And there you can see my graphics is on the screen.
Now I can also set that graphic to auto play, right? So we're gonna go to my HyperDeck and hit stop. I'm gonna cue the graphic, there it is queued. We know how to set auto play, right? So we can go up in here to settings, up to my HyperDeck, make sure auto play is on, it's on. So anytime I cut to the HyperDeck, it's gonna auto play. That includes cutting to keys. So this time what I wanna do is I don't wanna just turn it on, let's turn it off. I wanna have it follow the cut, okay? So it's gonna follow the cut. I'm cutting from the super source I'm on to the super source I'm on. Um, I have key number three right here, right? There's key number two. If I close that, key number three is open. I have it HyperDeck fill and HyperDeck key. Um, we're gonna play it and we're gonna see if it has an alpha channel because I need to have pre-multiplied key on if it has an alpha channel. So let's go ahead and do the cut. And so if I turn pre-multiplied key, you can see the difference. This graphic looks a lot crisper um, because that lower part of my lower thirds is transparent. So if I don't have pre-multiplied key on, then it's not gonna be as transparent. So what a alpha channel does is it takes, it keys out that back area and makes it just opaque white and it sharpens up those graphics. So any transparent graphic that doesn't have an alpha channel is gonna be a little bit transparent and it's gonna pick up the blues today in my shirt and it's not gonna be the same color. And you can see my shirt moving through that graphic if you look at it very closely. And if I turn pre-multiplied key on, it looks much better. So now we go back up here, we're gonna reset. We're gonna turn that key off. We're gonna go back and prepare it to auto roll. Um, I am gonna turn on this follow video and as I make my cut, the graphic flies in and it plays and it's set for pre-multiplied. So it's gonna look as good as it possibly can. So that is how you integrate your HyperDeck with animated graphics with or without an alpha channel. If they have an alpha channel, you can have alpha channel uh, pre-multiplied on or off in your key and it's not gonna affect anything. If you do not have an alpha channel and you turn on pre-multiplied key, it's gonna just key out the whole back and it's gonna be the, give you this ugly image. But if you ever see that, it's because you have a graphic, a, a transparent animated graphic. Same applies to a media pool graphic. If you turn pre-multiplied on and it doesn't have an alpha channel, you're gonna get that crazy look. And let's look right now, maybe I have a, a example here, but let's just check. Let's drop this one in. Let's go up here to key number one. Let's turn pre-multiplied off. Let's turn this one off and let's turn on key number one. And that's without a pre-multiplied on. And that's what happens when you click pre-multiplied on a graphic that doesn't have an alpha channel. It just whites out, keys out the whole background, and it looks like you made some terrible mistake. And that mistake is just very simply, you do not have an alpha channel on that graphic. And I don't have any transparency in this graphic, so I don't need an alpha channel. I only need an alpha channel on a lower thirds when there's transparency. And you can see I can move around and nothing's transparent in this graphic. But if I had that yellow transparent, then it's gonna pick up the color of my shirt and the white dots and it's gonna look scary. So that's how you set up your keys. You could do the same thing. Let's turn that off. Let's go down to my downstream keys, which are controlled right here in the software. You can see it right there. Let's go all the way down to my downstream keys. Here they are, and they're on one category. Let's turn this to HyperDeck. Fill, HyperDeck key is on. Um, Pre-multiplied is on. I could also bring that same graphic on. If I wanted to follow the cut, I can turn it on tie and then do a transition and my graphic is gonna come up. If I cue that graphic and I transition back, it's gonna turn off and it's still tied, but it's off. And then if I cut back again, this time with it cued, it should roll. There you go. So I can tie those graphics to my downstream keys, my upstream keys. You just wanna make sure that in the settings you have fill and key set to the HyperDeck 
and you have to have your graphic queued on the HyperDeck as well. And again, if I want to queue it from here, I can go right into my HyperDeck and queue my one video. If I had five graphics, I could queue them right here in the middle of my show. I can also set macros, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. You can program macro, switch to your HyperDeck channel, play a video, start it to roll automatically, delay it if you wanted to with a pause, so you could intro the video and then it would play, or you could literally cut to a motion graphic and have it play your HyperDeck, even cue that particular graphic, cue that particular video, and that's what we'll cover in the next video on the HyperDeck, so stay tuned.